Welcome back. We do a lot of reporting here at InfoWars about the police state and how it has gotten insane and out of hand. Well, now there is even more reports of police who are literally getting away with murder and then anyone who would dare question them and, and press for further investigation of these murders, because that's what they are, they're bludgeoning them, they're beating them, they're saying you're going to have a peaceful protest against us, well, we'll show you who's the boss. So David Knight is joining me in the studio with more. So, David, what is the latest news coming out of North Carolina? Well, there was a peaceful protest of a 17-year-old who died in the back of a police car. Now, he had been arrested for a misdemeanor. Mm. He was handcuffed in the back of the police car and shot in the head. That was about a month ago. And last night, they had a vigil that went to the Durham Police Department, and that got very violent. It's about 150 to 200 people, and we've got a clip of that. Okay. They were clearly upset with the fact that people were out expressing themselves and upset over the fact that it appears that they murdered a 17-year-old child. They didn't really look like batons or nightsticks, but they were a little thinner and longer, and they were reaching over the banner, whacking people. So now they were holding this peaceful vigil for this young man that they believed was murdered by yes. the police. I yes. mean, somehow he was, he was searched, but yet managed to get a gun with him inside the back of the police car and shoot himself. Very improbable that you'd be able to do that with your hands behind your back. And he's only been picked up for a misdemeanor. This is something that is just maybe 30 days in jail max that he could get with this. This is very similar to a case that happened in Jonesboro, Arkansas mm -hmm. back in 2012. The police eventually got somebody that could reenact moving their hands underneath the handcuffs and pulling it around but that also begs a question as to how this person could also hide the gun while they were handcuffing them taking them into custody and it's very similar to what we just saw happen earlier this week where in Ohio a fellow attempted a jailbreak and when he was captured by the police they were caught on the video camera saying we're gonna break your neck we're gonna have a party for you when we get back to the jail and within an hour he was hung in the jail and the coroner says it was murder Common sense says this is murder. Why, if somebody has a gun and they're a criminal, then the case of the Jonesboro, Arkansas case, the guy was a drug dealer or whatever. If he wanted to use a gun, why wouldn't he use it on these officers instead of on himself? But here we've got a 17-year-old who's been arrested for a misdemeanor. Right, exactly. It's nothing that extreme. And then the police here, they went to extreme intimidation tactics against these people who dared yes. to question the official story. Yes, tear gas, the whole bit, just like you saw in Dallas when you were protesting mm -hmm. against the shutdown of free speech. What's interesting about this is this is the second time they've done a vigil on the one month anniversary of this. Now they're going to come back again in January 19th. They're, they said they're going to be back protesting this. I hope they don't let this go. This is what's necessary is for people to stand up in mass when they see the government essentially getting away with brutality, getting away with murder. Right, and I'm going to be speaking with Amber Lyon later in the show. She covered another protest in Anaheim where they were protesting police brutality, and there that took a violent turn as well. So here we have another peaceful yes. vigil where there it's the same incidents, and it's it's almost like how dare you, you know, question us and question our authority? We are going to bludgeon you and literally beat you down if over you dare. and over again we see this. The UC Davis cop who sprayed people with pepper spray, even though they were handcuffed and in front of him, hmm. that. That's the thing that really we should all be upset about. Doesn't matter what the protest was. We have protected under the Constitution. We have recognized that we have a right to address our government about grievances that we have. We have a right to protest. And they are using these over-the-top Gestapo tactics, over-the-top brutality and assault on people. And in many cases, like we see here, perhaps murder. So that needs to be investigated. Absolutely. And, and you're right about that. It is it is a intimidation tactic. That's why they're really building up, militarizing our police force mm -hmm. so that we, we won't go to these protests and that we won't stand up for our rights and we won't speak out. We'll just cower in fear. Yes. As the man was saying, the they, they come up to the people holding a banner, reach over the banner, start beating them with uh, clubs or whatever it was, a different type of billy club that they had. Yeah. And of course, they turn out in full riot gear, which in and of itself is very intimidating because they're in full body armor. Armor, and they're allowed to beat you without with impunity if you try to resist then they really focus on you so, right yeah, yeah so very concerning need to but we want to see if they're going to exactly we want to see that they're going to continue to press this it looks mm -hmm. like the community is going to stand up against this and stand for this stand mm -hmm. for all of us actually so yes. we'll definitely keep our eye on this story as it develops yes thanks david all right, well, stay with us after the break because David Knight is going to be interviewing Karen Lamoureux. She's the woman in that viral video who destroyed Common Core in about four minutes. You're not going to want to miss this. The facts.
are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield formulation. Fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. And the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution. InfoWarsStore.com.